Hello and welcome to the Smarter Tech Podcast. I'm Nick, the EMF guy, Pino, the author of the Non-Tinfoil Guide to EMS and an advocate for safe technologies. Today, I have the immense privilege of talk- talking with Katrin Arnston, who's an expert in algae nutrition. Why are we talking into? Why are we talking about algae today, Nick? Well, you know, the environment is increasingly toxic and it makes it very difficult to find food choices that are clean and to find your sources of nutrition without having phthalates and this and that and glyphosate and heavy metals. And I stumbled up and, you know, I, I've heard about algae years ago, but when I had a discussion by the pool <laughs> in Scottsdale at a health event with Catherine, I, I knew that I had to have her on the podcast. Catherine, thank you. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Nicholas. It's so, so good to be here. And um, uh, also a fellow Canadian because you're you're in Montreal, right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I live in Boston, but I am Canadian. So <laughs> I did not. Know. Oh, yeah. You told me maybe were you from Toronto? Is that yes, it? Or? Yes, yes. From Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. But there uh, you, not, go. And, you know, not to say that any other culture or country is any less important than Canada, but it's always fun to run into a fellow Canuck. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And you recognize the accent when we met. Yes. I, I realized you said, oh, French Canadian. And many right. <laughs> people actually don't get it. They think I'm German or something. But yeah, yeah, let's yeah. get let's get right into into the weeds here uh, or into the algae, uh, so to speak. So I've heard about spirulina. I've heard about chlorella. I've always been a little bit hesitant to even add them to my smoothies because I hear about the heavy metal contamination and the sourcing. I find that very complicated, almost gives me a headache. So let's get started <laughs> about, okay, well, what are these different products that we hear about, spirulina, chlorella, or if there are others, and then um, your journey trying to source them in a way that is clean? Yeah. Yeah, um, great question. So let me start by telling people that um, algae was the first life on Earth um, almost four billion years ago, number one, and it's still here. So it's obviously doing something right. <clears throat> it made it its way through all the ice ages and the dinosaur ages. Number two, algae is actually a food. It's a food category. So it's not a supplement. And this is really important because with supplements, they're made with heat, which damages the nutrients, and then they can put binders, they can put all kind of junk in there. You have no idea, and they don't need to put it on the on the label. And algae, and you'll find out we sell them in tiny tablets about the size of a baby aspirin. There's one ingredient. It's a whole food, just like broccoli or carrots or or even meat. One one ingredient, algae is food. Number three, there are two main categories of algae. Uh, one is called macroalgae, the other one is microalgae. We're going to be talking about microalgae, but let me explain to you what macroalgae is first, because it's also very valuable. It's that stringy stuff that washes up on shore, uh, also known as seaweed or dulse or kelp. And the reason why it's good for you is because it has high fiber and high iodine, if you're looking for iodine. But the downside is there's virtually zero nutrition. So high fiber, only in the sea, but zero nutrition. Microalgae, which is what we're talking about today, is completely opposite. It has either zero fiber or virtually no fiber, the highest concentration of nutrition in the universe. Even NASA says algae has a thousand times more nutrition than any other fruit or vegetable. And it's everywhere. It's not just in the sea. It's in the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the soil, your aquarium, swimming pool. And um, there is nothing, you can get a million microalgae on the head of a pin. That's how tiny they are. It's what they're called microalgae. They're so microscopic, you can't see them. Now, there is two mainstream types of uh, microalgae. Well, actually, there's a backup. There's tens of thousands of strains. The two most well-known, uh, one is a blue-green algae and one is a green algae. One strain of blue-green algae is called spirulina and one strain of green algae is called chlorella. But what makes spirulina and chlorella unique is that they are the two algae that are harvested as food crops. So while there is other blue-green algae in the ocean, and if you go online and you read about a blue-green algae closing your favorite beach, we're not talking about spirulina. It's Mm -hmm. just another strain of blue-green algae that is in the ocean. And I always tell people, poor algae gets the bum rap because algae kills bacteria and absorbs toxins. 
So when it shows up on the ocean to close your favorite beach, it's because it's the cleanup crew. You couldn't <laughs> see the toxins or the bacteria, but you can see the algae. But it's there to clean up whatever mess has been created. And it does the same thing in your body. So I tell people, you know, while you're getting your beauty sleep, if you've been taking algae, it's like having the scrub-a-dub team in there, cleaning out all the garbage in your cells, getting rid of toxins, and we'll, we'll, dwell, we'll dwell on the toxin thing in a minute. So spirulina and chlorella are two microalgae, and uh, they are the two that are harvested. It's called hydroponically. Uh, and we're known for having the safest algae in the world for a number of reasons. One is that uh, we grow our algae in triple filtered spring mountain water. Here's a picture of a spirulina farm, and here's a picture of a chlorella farm. So again, there is algae in the ocean, but spirulina and chlorella are not from the ocean. They are grown in fresh water, just mm. like tomatoes or lettuce. And, and because we grow ours in triple filtered spring mountain water, this is one of the reasons why ours is toxin free, because as I mentioned, algae will absorb whatever's in the water. Yeah. So if there's toxins in the water, there'll be toxins in your algae. There's a company that grows it in Klamath Lake. They call theirs um, uh, 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 Flora. Um, I'm trying to think of the name. Anyways, you do not want algae grown in Klamath Lake. You do not want algae grown in the ocean because there are microtoxins in wild bodies of water. Algae is the only food I can think of that you do not want grown wild. So that's why we grow ours in triple filtered spring mountain water. We also do third party lab tests here in the US and we also do a third party lab test just for microtoxins because we sell through doctors and we they need to know that the algae is clean. So mm -hmm. no toxins in the algae, at least not in ours. Uh, number two, after we've grown it in triple filtered spring mountain water, then we air dry it into a powder without high heat, which I'll talk to you why that's so important, why it's uh, protecting your health. And then we press them into these little tablets that we call bits because there's they're called they're just bits of nutrition. Here's a um, this is spirulina tablets. You can see it's a darker color because it's a blue green algae. This is chlorella, which is a green algae. And, and you, to the eye, the visible eye almost look the same, but when you put this in in the, the blue green algae in in water, you get um, a very blue. You see the blue pigment come out. This is uh, spirulina, which we call our energy bits. I'll tell you about the difference between the two of them in a minute. If you put some tablets of the spirulina in water, you see a beautiful blue color. That's a blue pigment that's called phycocyanin, which has um, characteristics proven in science to kill cancer cells. That's pretty important, right? And then sure. chlorella only has the green pigment, which is called chlorophyll. People most know chlorophyll, but you can see how it clumps. It doesn't, it doesn't disperse evenly like the blue pigment. That's because mm -hmm. chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. And that means it heals your cell walls because your cell walls are made of lipids, which is a fancy way of seeing fats. So the blue pigment has uh, cancer fighting treatments and uh, the blue pigment or the green pigment heals your cell walls. So, um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The reason I showed you the blue pigment is because it is very, very important uh, uh, nutrient only found in spirulina. It's not found anywhere else in the universe. And it not only speeds up the uh, generation of ATP in healthy cells, which is why we call our spirulina energy bits, because it increases your energy, but it naturally kills cancer cells. And that's pretty important, but it's damaged and deactivated by high heat. And almost all the other algae companies use high heat to dry their algae, because if they're a lower priced algae, they need to get to market quickly. So they use high heat to do that. But that deactivates this really important nutrient that kills cancer cells. So, you know, that's important. And also high heat deactivates enzymes. And there's a very important enzyme we'll talk about later on called superoxide dismutase, also known as SOD, which is proven to um, protect the mitochondria from free radical damage. And what this does is by protecting it, you reduce re inflammation, you reduce the chance of heart disease, you reduce the chance of Alzheimer's, but it's also deactivated by high heat. So the fact that we don't use high heat preserves these nutrients as well as other ones. So you get the full value of the spirulina and chlorella. Um, and then now I'd probably like to, you know, I'll, I'll go into the differences because they do completely different things in your body. But these tablets 
that we call bits because they're bits of nutrition are so concentrated. You're not going to believe this, but each tablet has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. It's about three quarters of a pound of vegetables. So if you're worried about either not either you don't like vegetables or you can't find any that are clean because let's face it even the organic vegetables have toxins on them because they get blow off from other um other um crops and if you can't eat if you're only eating traditional vegetables man they are loaded with glyphosate and pesticides so if that's the case you may not want to eat many vegetables because you're worried about the toxicity which as you know causes cellular damage, causes mitochondria uh, dysfunction. Uh, and chlorella, we'll talk about that in a minute, pulls out toxins. But just to eliminate that from the very beginning, just take algae tablets because now you're getting a clean source. It's a whole food. Ours are raw because we don't use high heat. Uh, it's low calorie, low carb, it's ketogenic. Uh, so if you're doing intermittent fasting, it doesn't interfere with your fasts. It, it's ancestral. It was the first life on earth, so it fits into a paleo diet. There's no lectins or oxalates. So if you're a carnivore, you're in luck because you can eat these and there will not be any stomach distress as you might get from you know kale or spinach where there's or even almonds that have high um, lectins and oxalates. So I, I, algae is for everyone. Uh, it, whatever your lifestyle, whatever your choice um, of dietary um, regime, whatever your, whether you're an active person, whether you're a newborn, a teenager, or a, in your in, late in life, these are so easy to digest, so concentrated in food. Ours are grown so safely um, that it's really it's the future of fast food because if you can swallow water. Most people do swallow these. I chew them. In fact, I just had some, so my tongue's green. <laughs> uh, you can get all the nourishment you need in seconds, in seconds. And it's so cost effective. Uh, we sell them in large bags of a thousand tablets. One bag has the same nutrition as 551 pounds of vegetables right there in that one bag. By the way, they never go bad. You don't have to clean them, cook them. You don't even have to eat them. And if you took 10 tablets a day, which is sort of what we recommend, although you could take less if you wanted, or you can certainly take more, but 10 tablets a day, if you buy the large bag, and we have a discount code for you later on, it works out to a dollar a day. A dollar a day to get all the nourishment you need to uh, make sure your body and your cells and your mitochondria can perform optimally and removes toxins. I'd say that was a pretty good deal. And honestly, we live in such a toxic world, as you know. I, I have a stat that says the um, average American has 700 toxins in their body. And that plays havoc with all of your cellular communication and your uh, cellular turnover, your mitochondria's ability to generate ATP. And as you're going to find out, spirulina gives your mitochondria and your body all the nourishment it needs. And chlorella pulls out toxins and helps you um, uh, uh, build your immune system. So spirulina is very energizing, which is why we call ours energy bits. And chlorella is very healing and detoxing and helps you um, recover from anything, which is why we, we call them recovery bits. Hey, let me interrupt this podcast for a second. I need to tell you about one of the EMF protection or health supporting tools that I really believe in and which help finance the costs of this show. One of the most common questions I've received in the last few years of this work as the EMF guy is what EMF meter should I buy? out of all these options on the market. There are a lot of good meters out there with prices ranging from a few hundred dollars to a few thousands, but the number one meter that I think complete beginners should consider using is called the Sam Protect 33. This is the exact meter Brian Hoyer and I recommend to our members inside the Electropollution Fix course. This meter can measure three different types of EMFs at the same time, which is a very rare feature. The readings are very accurate for the price you pay, which is uh, uh, in the range of um, almost around $200. So there's also a sound feature for the wireless setting and also a triple axis magnetic field reader, which tells you that the magnetic field readings will be precise. So if you want to check out the SEM Protect 33, simply visit theemfguy.com shop. 
Okay, now back to the podcast. And maybe something to get into when it comes to chlorella, some people told me, you know, chlorella is a binder, it will pull out toxins. Other people say chlorella is a weak binder, doesn't work for detox, blah, blah, blah. So there's many opinions. But Dr. Dietrich Klinghart, who's one of the oh, yeah. most known um, doctors, although, of course, controversial, he's a pioneer in the treatment of let's say chronic disease or mysterious illness that just won't be resolved told me that there's one type of chlorella in particular the chlorella pyrid pyridosa yes <laughs> that's that what it? we saw yes yeah. so this one he told me that's a specific i don't know if that's a strain or how you would go about compared to other chlorella on the market he said this one has detoxification effects and those that tell you that uh, chlorella doesn't work. It's because they're using the wrong strain. Is that is that your experience too? Um, well, a couple of things. There's another uh, strain. I think it's called um, chlorella maximus, and it's not as powerful as paradisio. Uh, we use the paradisio. So, <clears throat> a couple of reasons why chlorella may not work for people is in most cases, I'd say in 99% of the cases, they aren't taking enough. And Dr. Mm. Klinghart will say this as well. So. Here's the great, let me just give you a little profile of the benefits of chlorella because it does more than detox sure. and depends on what your goal is from the chlorella. So chlorella has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. That's why it's called chlorella because of the high chlorophyll. I'm going to show you this. This is the chemical composition of your hemoglobin and this is the chemical composition of chlorophyll. Notice that they're virtually identical. The only difference is your blood has iron in the middle, which is what carries oxygen and chlorophyll has magnesium. Otherwise, the chemical composition is virtually the same. Why is that important? Because chlorophyll builds your blood. And when you have healthy blood, you're gonna have a healthier body, healthier organs, have a healthier brain, everything works better. So the fact that chlorella has the highest chlorophyll, 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula, 25 times more chlorophyll than liquid chlorophyll. So it's very healing uh, for uh, just for the chlorophyll. Number two, as I mentioned earlier, chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. And that's important because your cell walls all have what's called a lipid membrane. It's a fat membrane. This is why you take omega-3 and D3 to ensure your membrane of your cells remain porous. Well, chlorophyll does that too because it's a fat-based pigment. So that's really important because when your cell walls are porous, it allows nutrients in and toxins out. So again, chlorella facilitates that. Chlorella also, um, because of the chlorophyll, kills bacteria. Remember I said chlor um, algae shows up when there's bacteria or toxins in the, world, well, in, the, in the water, does the same thing in your body. It kills bacteria in your mouth, in your, in your colon. Very, very important. So for, uh, and it has all, it has 40 vitamins and minerals, um, which are all necessary to build your immune system. So, um, and your immune system, 80 to 90% of it is in your gut because a lot of your immune system is, uh, is based on healthy bacteria in your gut. So for all of those reasons, you could take a smaller quantity of chlorella and enjoy wellness benefits, enjoy the chlorophyll cleansing benefits. However, if you want to detox, if you want to chelate and remove heavy metals, pesticides, glyphosate, uh, alcohol, in fact, uh, um, lactic acid, uh, spores from um, molds, you need to have a quantity that can do that. Now, for the wellness benefits, 10 tablets of chlorella is plenty, and you'll get all the chlorophyll and all the cleansing. But for concentrated uh, and ability to pull out and attach to and pull out the toxins, you need at least 20, probably 30 tablets. So what's happened in the past, most people are just taking a couple of, of tablets. Well, that will do nothing for your, your, your detox capability. Mm -hmm. You need enough, and Dr. Klinghart talks about this, because the way it, it works is it's the chlorella has a hard cell wall. It's the hardest cell wall in the plant kingdom. And that cell wall, nobody really knows how it works, but it identifies where there are toxins and attaches to them. But now you need enough chlorella to be able to hold on to the toxin and chelate it all the way out of your body. And 30 seems to be the magic number. 20, you might, you might be able to do it, but 30 is the safest uh, quantity. 
Now, I recommend chlorella way over something like uh, activated charcoal for detox. The reason is the activated charcoal will pull out all minerals, the good stuff and the bad stuff. And, and so you can end up becoming dehydrated because you lose all your electrolytes if you're not careful when you're using uh, activated charcoal. That never happens with chlorella because it's loaded with, with minerals, number one. It's got magnesium, potassium, um, all the important minerals like electrolytes, and it only pulls out the toxins. I call it intelligent food for two reasons. You have to be intelligent to take it, and it knows what to do in your body. And, and so just to show people how valid this is, the United Nations used chlorella after Chernobyl to pull out all the radiation that was spilled out um, and people healed from the radiation. After the, and more recently, 10 years ago, after the Fukushima disaster, where again, the, um, there was a uh, radiation released, the entire global supply of chlorella was bought up within 24 hours by everybody in Asia because they know that chlorella is the only thing that will uh, pull out radiation if you've been exposed to it. And because chlorella is a plant, it took another six weeks before uh, uh, the chlorella was growing again and you know, dried and available for the rest of the world. And we were in that era. So uh, we didn't have any, we ran out of chlorella like everybody else did. So there are uh, international agencies recognize uh, the, that chlorella's ability to pull out toxins is, um, is proven. And there are tens of thousands of studies documenting this, uh, but you have to take enough of it. And so mm -hmm. a lot of, and we generally recommend the chlorella at night. And I'll talk to you about spirulina and when we recommend, we usually generate, recommend it during the day. But the reason why we recommend it at night, you can take it any time of day, but definitely take it at night because when you are sleeping, that's when your body goes through a detox and repair cycle. So mm -hmm. if you have chlorella in your body while you're sleeping, first of all, it has the highest tryptophan in the world. So it helps facilitate a deep sleep. It won't put you to sleep, but if you're in the sleep mode, you will get into a deep sleep easier and stay there. So that's number one. Number two, while you're in your deep sleep, that's when your brain shrinks. Your brain has something called a glymphatic system. It's like your lymphatic system, but it, it uh, allows your brain to be clean, cleansed uh, of uh, heavy metals like aluminum, which are known for contributing to Alzheimer's. And um, chlorella also has something I didn't mention earlier called chlorella growth factor. Chlorella is the fastest growing organism in the universe. And when you take it, what it does is it speeds up the growth of your own cells. And it also facilitates the growth and circulation of stem cells. These are what repair your body. And as you get older, uh, and also it repairs mitochondria. As you get older, you have fewer mitochondria which means you have less energy, um, which means you have less cellular energy to heal. Uh, you also have less stem cells, which also means you have less ability to heal. You also have less melatonin, which means you have less likelihood of getting a good sleep. And deep sleep is when the repair cycle happens and chlorella has the tryptophan, which helps you with that. So, um, and, and then of course the hard cell wall pulls out the toxins and still repairs your, your, uh, all your cells and your commu cellular communication. So you can't go wrong taking chlorella before bed because while you're getting your beauty rest, you're getting rid of all the junk in your trunk. It also stimulates peristalsis. Speaking of junk in your trunk, uh, peristalsis is a fancy way of saying bowel movement um, because the reality is you have to get rid of stuff that your body doesn't want. And if you aren't eating fiber, which a lot of people aren't, or if you are on medications, which a lot of people are, you are likely constipated. And constipation means you aren't having regular bowel movements. Guess what happens? All that stuff in your colon is sitting there. And what's sitting there? Garbage, toxins. So they circulate, they get picked up by your bloodstream and circulate yet again. How insulting is that? It's like, if you don't take the garbage out in your house, right? For a week, it starts to get smelly and, you know, animals come and, you know, it's, it's not a pretty picture. That's what's going on in your colon if you are not having l regular bowel movements. And nobody likes to talk about it, but <clears throat> uh, processed foods, sugar, 
um, carbs, medications, and lack of fiber cause constipation. And that's an invitation for your toxicity to just be exponentially increased because that stuff that's sitting in your colon is full of garbage and you got to get rid of it. Chlorella and the high concentration of chlorophyll stimulate the, what's called peristalsis, which is the, the muscle movement to get your, um, to, to have a bowel movement. So, so in the morning, after you've had your fabulous sleep, you've had all that great repair, you've gotten rid of all your toxins, now your body is triggered to release it all. Because, and that's what you want. And you want it naturally. This is food. This was a gift to us from Mother Nature. I can't claim responsibility for discovering algae. That's Mother <laughs> Nature at her best. But what I can tell you is that we grow it safely and uh, to facilitate uh, um, the most clean food you'll ever put in your body. It's so clean you can give it to newborns and that all the nutrients are preserved so you get the high value add. Um, and honestly, we're in a situation in our world where our food is so overprocessed, the soils are so overcropped, there aren't any minerals left in them. So even if you are eating vegetables, you simply are not getting the nourishment you need and you're surrounded by toxins. And so algae seems to be the answer to just about everything. And we'll talk about spirulina in a minute, how nourishing it is. Even the United Nations has endorsed spirulina algae, which we'll talk about next, as the answer to world hunger. And you can go online and Google. They had a global conference 50 years ago saying it was the answer because it has three times the amount of protein and is a sustainable, eco-friendly crop. And so my job is to try to help uh, explain what these two beautiful foods are so that you'll understand them and that you'll be able to nourish yourself and, and heal yourself, literally, because you'll get rid of the toxicity um, that, is, that is causing imbalances in your body. And you'll do it with food, not with medications. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's extremely compelling. I I, I did not know about chlorella before sleep, so that's that's how I will start using it. Is that something maybe I used with? Is it is it better on an empty stomach, for example? It, in that it case, it, honestly, it doesn't matter. Although I've also read, and Dr. Klinghart will support this, that um, for some reason, when you pair chlorella with cilantro, it seems to magnify the impact as well. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention about chlorella is it has the highest amount of glutathione in the world. Glutathione is an antioxidant that also pulls out toxins. It's considered a master antioxidant, and it particularly pulls out toxins in your liver. Um, mm -hmm. And the other cool thing is about chlorophyll is that only 10% of it is actually absorbed in your stomach. The rest of it travels through your liver and down through your colon. That's why if you eat as much chlorella as I do, and if you take the 30 tablets uh, a day uh, while you're going through detox, just don't be afraid that if your poop is a little green, because yeah. it shows that the chlorophyll has moved its way through the entire process. And um, I, I live in Boston, and I go for a walk by the river where there's a lot of uh, Canadian geese, and I, I chuckle because I, I, their poop looks the same color as mine. <laughs> because they're eating the algae. Well, because they're eating grass, which is high in chlorophyll. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. So, okay. But, I get it. but the problem is our food, I still eat vegetables, of course. But um, if anyone's been buying arugula like I do, it goes yellow after about the third day. Why? Because there was never a lot of chlorophyll in the first place. Um, mm. You could fill it, whatever room you're sitting in listening to this, you could fill that room with arugula and you would not have as much chlorophyll as in this 20 tablets of chlorella because it's so concentrated. Remember, 25 times more chlorophyll than liquid chlorophyll. So yeah. um, it's very uh, efficient nutrition. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I mean, unless you, you, you have a garden and you eat everything that is straight from the soil, you're losing some nutrition on like when there's transportation and then there's you know, food irradiation, there is, of course, the contamination of the soils, and then also the fact that even in organic farms, the topsoil is minimal. So even the levels of nutrition in, in, in vegetables and fruits have been going way down in the last decade. So uh, yeah, it's, it's not saying don't eat the veggies, still eat them. But even then, we're, we're getting 
diets, whatever your your diet mentality is, all across the board, it's becoming more difficult to get enough of these these nutrients. That's just what I've been also researching in the last, you know, almost 15 years at this point, because before talking about EMFs, I was talking about nutrition. And that's exactly my understanding was it's tough. Even you, you eat all organic, are you getting enough? Most people are deficient in many things. So, yeah. but let, let's dive into spirulina if you're willing, yeah. because I, I personally... I mean, I, I know these are different, but what is the use for spirulina versus chlorella? Like when would it be best to choose spirulina instead, for example? Yes, yes. And I'll go through that. So so first, let me tell you. So spirulina, again, is a blue-green algae. Chlorella is a green algae. And it has nutrients in it that uh, increase your energy, your mental, your physical, and your um, cellular energy. Um, th those are the main claims of fame. Now, a lot of people love spirulina. We recommend it generally in the morning or the afternoon or before a workout because that's when you're tired. That's when you're hungry because it satisfies your hunger. You could have, we, we also make them in little pouches of 30 tablets. You could have this pouch of 30 tablets for lunch. There's one calorie per tablet, um, five grams of, uh, of amino acids, which is the equivalent of 30 grams of protein, 40 vitamins and minerals. You won't be hungry for five hours. So um, for intermittent fasting, for traveling, for in between uh, meetings, it's very nourishing and satisfies your hunger, and and it gives you energy because um, it of the high concentration of protein. It has the highest protein in the world. It has 64% protein, which is three times the amount of protein as you as you get in steak. And the and the um, protein in algae are all individual aminos. Now, when you eat animal protein, there all the aminos are bound up. And it can take up to two to three days for them to be broken into smaller aminos. Um, and if you don't have all the prop proper factors, you don't absorb them all. So, you know, you often absorb 10% of your protein as amino acids. Then you have collagen, which are in clusters of aminos called peptides. And then you have algae protein, which are individual aminos. The reason why this is important is because individual aminos is what you're, is the only thing your body can absorb. So A, you save energy because you don't have to break anything down to get access to the aminos. B, algae has 18 of the 20 aminos, including the nine your body can't make, so it's a complete protein, and it's loaded with B vitamins, so you get physical and, and mental energy in the moment just because of the access, and it's 99% bioavailable. Animal protein can take a, you know up to three days. Uh, spirulina, um, the uh, aminos are within minutes, so very bioavailable. Now, a lot of people were saying, well, can I take spirulina before bed? And, and my answer is yes. They, and then the, they then ask, well, won't it keep me up? Yeah. Well, the difference is, and the answer is no. And here's why. A lot of people as, uh, associate energy with something like an energy drink or sugar or caffeine. And those are stimulants. Those speed up molecules from your brain to your body so and they have a rush and then you have a crash and algae what it's doing is it's generating cellular energy it's not a stimulant it's allowing your mitochondria to be more efficient in generating what's called atp which is the form of cellular energy that your body needs for everything so when you have more cellular energy your body goes oh I have more to do, more availability of, of cellular energy. And, oh, I'm, I'm currently working out. So now that cellular energy will be devoted to your workout. Or maybe you're writing an exam or maybe you're driving a car. So at the moment, your body goes, I need more cellular energy to focus. So now your focus is improved. But if you're going to bed, your body goes, oh, I'll use that cellular energy to get into a sleep. Uh, the difference between the analogy I give people so you can understand the difference between a stimulant and cellular energy like you get from algae is like when you put paper on a fire, you get a big burst of a flame and then it dies down, right? That's what you get from sugar, caffeine or, or an energy drink. That's a stimulant. When you take algae, which facilitates cellular energy, that's like putting a log on the fire. 
very steady, constant, uh, you know, no drama. I tell people there's no drama with algae. In fact, if you took 10 in the morning, 10 spirulina, because that's the one that gives you energy, chlorella will not give you energy. You might not even notice it, but what you will notice is that you're not hungry, uh, that you have a little better uh, mental acuity, and um, you just have more pep in your step. And if you're not feeling that, take more. Um, just to let you know, our NHL players take 75 spirulina before a hockey game because it gives them energy on the ice. It helps with their mental acuity because you know they have to look where the puck is going. Um, and then they put, then they have 75 chlorella after the game to pull out lactic acid to um, so their muscles aren't sore the next day because uh, it detects the lactic acid as a toxin. Uh, also, it builds your immune system. And any athlete knows that when you are pushing hard, whether it's on a marathon or a triathlete or any sport, it wears your immune system down. And so chlorella um, will uh, protect that. So spirulina, back to spirulina, very nourishing. Uh, we have doctors who are now recommending it when they recommend, then they prescribe Ozempic or uh, any of the um, weight loss drugs, because when you're taking Ozempic, people aren't eating. And so, yeah. but what's happening is that, yes, they're losing weight, but they're not, because they're not eating, number one, they're losing muscle, not fat. And number two, your body is constantly regenerating itself every day. A trillion cells die and every day a trillion cells grow back. But if you don't give your body what it needs to have that that process done uh, optimally, you will lose mitochondria, you will lose cellular um, uh, structure, and you will have a health issue eventually. Um, it's be it's becoming a very serious problem. And so when they're now making sure their patients take our chlorella. We also work with gastric bypass doctors for the same reason. Their patients have a much smaller stomach and they're, they were running into nutritional deficiencies because they can't eat a lot of physical food. But the tablets are the size of a baby aspirin. So, and one of these has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. I just had a plate of vegetables. How <laughs> easy is that? Like, yeah. This is the future of fast food. and it's raw, it's paleo, it's carnivore, it has no lectins, no oxalates, it's really actually no fiber because it's actually a bacteria. Very, very efficient nutrition, nourishes you, gives you energy, protects your mitochondria, um, helps cleanse, chlorella is the detoxing algae, but you were asking the difference between the two of them. So I came up with this chart. Um, I'll explain it first in a minute. I speak at a lot of, um, uh, summits in, and I stay at nice hotels. And it occurred to me, you know, in the morning, sometimes I get room service and I'm very nourished for the day. I get what I need. I get my energy from my eggs or whatever I'm having. And then later in the day, housekeeping comes in and cleans out all the junk in my trunk, stuff I don't need. And I, that's just like algae. Spirulina, yeah. think of spirulina as room service. It, you take it in the morning or the afternoon. Gives you all the energy, all the nourishment that you need for the day. And then chlorella is like housekeeping. Pulls out all the stuff that you don't want later on, gets rid of it, cleans you up. And so um, I just thought, well, that was kind of a cute little analogy to help people understand the difference. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that spirulina, because it heals the mitochondria so much, and because the highest concentration of mitochondria is in your brain, it's brain food. A lot of people know that fat, fatty fish are brain food, and it's mostly because of the high omega-3. And I remind people, well, where do you think the fish get the omega-3 from? They get it from algae. So yeah. spirulina is loaded with essential fatty acids, including omega-3, not high numbers, but enough to you know really help your brain. But the key to your brain health is preserving your mitochondria, and there is nothing in the world that does that better than spirulina. So spirulina is brain food. Chlorella, on the other hand, because it's very cleansing because of the chlorophyll, feeds your uh, gut biome because it has fiber and it has all the nutrients that your immune system need. It's really gut health. So think of spirulina as brain food and chlorella as uh, gut food. And let's not forget that the gut and the brain are joined by the vagus nerve where communication between the two occur. So when you heal your brain, 
you're all automatically starting to heal your gut and vice versa. So, um, so they do completely different things. Spirulina, nourishing, energizing, satisfies your hunger. Great for intermittent fasting. Great as a pre-workout fuel. Take it in the morning or afternoon whenever you need energy or are hungry. Chlorella, because it's a detoxing, cleansing, healing algae that helps you recover from your day or from drinking or from sports or from a disease. Generally take it um, at night um, so that you can benefit from all the healing properties, cleansing properties, and it will also help you sleep. But you can take the two of them together. We actually have a brand called Vitality Bits, which is a blend of the two of them if you want to simplify uh, your life. Speaking of simplifying your life, there is so there are so many nutrients in either of them. You can re, you don't need to get a multivitamin. This will replace your multivitamin, fish oil, CoQ10, biotin, and all those things expire at different times and they they clutter your countertop. That you can get all of that in here. Plus, there's so much protein, you won't need as much animal protein. And then chlorella because it has so much chlorophyll. If you don't like greens or you uh, don't have a clean source or they give you gas or they cause you constipation, you never have to eat another vegetable again, as long as you take five or 10 of the chlorella, um, uh, preferably chlorella because there's more chlor chlorophyll. But if you could only pick one, I would probably suggest um, energy bits for nourishment, chlorella for detox. But uh, so it replaces a lot of things and it replaces, it gives you back money, it gives you back time because you don't have to cook and clean. And now you just eat for entertainment, not for nourishment. Um, kids love them. And we know kids don't like vegetables. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, this solves a lot of uh, headaches and, uh, and arguments at the dinner table. We've had mothers write us saying, oh, God, you saved our family because we don't have to argue anymore about vegetables. Um, anyone who's on the autistic spectrum, spirulina is really great because, again, it's brain food. This helps with thought and social engagement. This helps with mood. We did our own um, clinical trial on how, how it reduced inflammation in veterans who had post-traumatic stress disorder in 30 days. Inflammation was completely gone. Um, you'll hear algae has been around. It's a multi-billion dollar agricultural crop in Asia. They've been taking spirulina and chlorella every day for 60 years. 99% of algae is grown in Asia and 99% of it is consumed there. So you may say, well, with all these benefits you're talking about, Catherine, what, you know, if it's so great, like, why don't I know about it? Well, you don't know about it because it's not grown here, although I'm hoping to grow it in Florida. And no one's told you about it. Yeah. <laughs> Just like you didn't know about EMF, right, until recently, or you didn't know about chia or kiwa. But these things exist. And uh, in other countries, they're more knowledgeable about some of these issues than we are. Somebody yeah. has to educate you. you. Nicholas, you're doing a great job educating people about EMF. And so I, I'm, I'm the algae person. Um, I've been on 275 podcasts. I speak nationwide. Um, this has to get to the world because there is nothing with more nourishment. And if it's grown safely like we do, um, it is the purest food in the world and um, uh, it's safe enough for newborns, teenagers, kids, pets love, pets love this stuff. So uh, that's the true testament that you've got something that's healthy. <laughs> yeah. And when it comes to my community, many people have different types of food intolerances, uh, people with electro uh, hypersensitivity, for example, some of them can barely, you know, tolerate anything as far as EMFs go, but also tolerate any food. Many of them have multiple food uh, reactions and, you know, it causes histaminic uh, reactions, whether it's, you know, uh, inflammatory bowel syndrome or, or the opposite constipation or skin issues or itching. And I'm just thinking, you know, I've I've tried to look on the internet while while we you were talking just then. Is there such thing as you know intolerance to spirulina or chlorella? I cannot find much. It it seems to be extremely well tolerated, even for people with different types of intolerances. Is, is that yeah. the case, or is there Absolutely. a certain people that should avoid them? Absolutely, every single person of any age can take and should take spirulina. There hasn't been one recorded negative impact 
no contraindications, zero in the 75 years it's been heavily documented. But again, it's been used for centuries, just that you just didn't know about it. Um, and the only thing I will say is that if you've had a, um, a diet that's high in processed foods and lots of sugar, you might want to start with a fewer number, even okay. two or five, because there's so much nutrition that we don't want to shock your system. Um, yeah. But if you can get up to 10 a day, but you could start with less. I mean, we've had people who that were anemic and they took two tablets of spirulina and texted us in caps. Oh, my God, I feel so great. I had the best workout of my life. So whatever deficiencies um, you don't even know. I tell people it's never too late to feel great. You don't even know how great you will feel when you start taking spirulina and you don't have to wait long, 15 minutes. Um, but as I mentioned, it's it's quiet energy. So some people will feel it immediately. Some people won't feel it at all, but it's working at the cellular level. I'm And I discovered that the nutrient profile, especially the amino acids in spirulina is virtually identical to the nutritional profile of mother's breast milk. And we know that mother's breast milk is the perfect food. So spirulina is really number two. So number one, spirulina, any age uh, for any reason in any quantity, although after you get to over 100, um, you know, you, you might start getting um, some diarrhea just because of the uh, high, high alkalinity. Um, with chlorella, it's a detoxing algae. So um, same thing, it's safe for every age group, but some people have detox reactions, which yeah. can, which will occur while you're detoxing. It won't last forever, but it averages about 10 days uh, or longer, depending on your, where the toxins are. And those symptoms include stomach distress, um, uh, maybe a headache, a little bit of breakouts, but it's not the chlorella. It's the fact that they're pulling the toxins out of the cells. The toxins are circulating through the bloodstream and you eliminate them through breath, sweat, urine, and bowel movements. So the best way to, to speed up your detox is to sweat. You could do that through exercise, a sauna, um, you know, do some deep breathing exercises, um, and obviously, you know, get good, good sleep. And also increase maybe your water intake because they're very high in protein. So, um, so, but I will say, and, you know, we haven't got any evidence to this, but because it pulls out metals and sometimes there are metals like aluminum in uh, vaccines, um, which actually quite honestly you want to remove, uh, just to be on the safe side, if you are on medications that include metals in the com composition, there aren't many, um, we suggest you take the chlorella two hours before or after your medication. Okay. But it's a very rare occasion, but just to be on the safe side. But spirulina, hands down, absolutely carte blanche for every person at for any reason at any age uh, in any quantity. <laughs> um, and the maintenance amount we generally suggest are 10 spirulina tablets in the morning, 10 chlorella at night for wellness. But for chlorella for detox, uh, we, we recommend the 30 tablets. That being said, if you have a health condition, cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, any kind of diagnosis, we the medicinal quantity of each one is 30 or more until you get a clear diagnosis because um, we want you to get the best um, healing benefits from the algae. Um, and then you can get down, once you've had a clear diagnosis, then you can get down to your 10 or even if five is the magic number for you. For children, we suggest one or half a tablet for their age. So if they're four, maybe give them two a day. If they're six, give them three a day of either one. Um, but again, they can take, I, we, we've had people um, at our, when we go to events, um, uh, giving, if the children have been raised on this, the, we've had a little, I had a little girl who was 16 months, I swear to God, she had a had 100 chlorella tablets in the space of five minutes because she loved them so much. <laughs> she had green on the corners of her mouth. I've got pictures of her. You wouldn't believe this little creature yeah. would eat so much, but she was raised on it. So, and her, her father's a heart surgeon um, and is, her, her mother is a chiropractor. So they're well-informed yeah. of algae and us. So, so uh, yeah, it's, it's really great stuff. And, and please, um, if you, uh, like we, as I mentioned, we sell large bags, which are the good value. Here's a, probably a good time to 
share that de- that discount code. The discount sure. code is EMF Guy, all one word, and it gives you twenty percent off anything, not the subscriptions, but any any of the products on our website. Um, and the best value are the large bags of a thousand tablets. And if you took ten a day. Um, using your discount code EMF guy, it works out to a dollar a day. I'd say you're worth it. Your health is worth it. A dollar a day, that's not even a, a third of a Starbucks coffee. Um, and that won't change your life like like algae will. But um, if you live in the United States and have access to Amazon, you can go online and buy just a little pouch for $6 and try it out. And uh, there's 30 tablets in a pouch. So this would be like three days if you took serving and then come back to the website, energybits.com and uh, use your EMF guy discount code for 20% off. So, uh, so we, we're not here to pitch it. We just want people to feel comfortable with it, experience it themselves, know that it works. Um, and even if you don't buy anything, come to our website, energybits.com. We write a, a full blog every month. Lots of science references. Everything we do and say is science documented. Nothing I say, um, everything I say has a has a um, uh, PubMed uh, scientific um, link to it because um, I'm here to educate people. I started the company because my sister had breast cancer in Canada and her oncologist told her to change her diet to an alkaline diet. They didn't tell her what it was or why it was good for her. So I Jumped in to help her figure that out, which turned out to be a plant-based diet. And that led me to algae, which is the most alkaline, nutrient-dense food in the world. By the way, there's a German scientist from the 30s. His name is Otto Warburg, who discovered, he won a Nobel Prize for discovering that cancer cannot exist in an alkaline environment. So you want alkalinity through your diet. And algae is the easiest way to do that. So your cells are slightly alkaline, which indicates there's oxygen present and when there's oxygen present, they are healthier and uh, communicating properly, and it's less likely that cancer can take foot. And cancer is uh, um, one out of two people in North America are now being diagnosed with cancer. So we cannot ex- ignore that. A lot of it is um, based on uh, toxicity. In fact, I'll, on a personal note, we figured out my sister's breast cancer You'll, yeah, Nicholas, you'll appreciate this, was caused because for five years, she had children, she had a house that backed on to an uh, uh, area where all the hydro wires were, uh, the hydro towers. And they think that's it was from the EMF from the hydro towers. This is a real serious and issue. So if you can't move, because for whatever personal reason, you are near hydro towers, you need to be taking algae to get rid of the toxicity that's occurring. And you're going to need both of them because spirulina is the blue pigment kills cancer cells and chlorella pulls out toxins. So they work in conjunction with each other. But um, this this is uh, something that we can't escape, uh, you know, unless you want to go live, move to Iceland or something, which is not I, I'd rather be warm myself. <laughs> but uh, so on a personal note, that's where we figured out that's how she got her cancer. Uh, but but she she was completely healed and we celebrate her being cancer free every year for the last 12 years. So happy ending for me and my family. And we only want the same for for you and your family. Thank you so much, Catherine. It's been super informative. And then it gave me, you know, it made me love again the spirulina and chlorella. It's something that I've been keeping, you know, on the back burner of my mind as a potential superfood, but I was always concerned about the toxicity. And if you purchase a product and you're not sure if you're getting too much lead or too much arsenic, to me, it's just, you know, that uncertainty was just killing me. You know, I was like, I was like completely almost, you know, disregarding the entire, <laughs> the entire product because of that. Because for me, if there's even a slight chance that people are, are becoming more toxic because of one of my recommendations, I will not even risk it. And that's, yeah. that's the kind of moral responsibility I have to my readers. But something that is grown in an environment that is man-made, but that is clean, maybe that's just what we need. You know, this, this planet, we're making it, and, and people that are following me, for, for, of course, they want to clean up the planet, stop spraying everything that's being sprayed on our crops and things like that. But at the same time, what are, what can we do now? 
And I think that, you know, algae brings to the forefront, uh, to or at least is brought to the forefront in my mind as something very important to consider to get your nutrition. So uh, thank you for enlightening us. And again, for the EMF guy coupon code 20 percent that's very generous though so well i'm gonna have this in the show notes and in the comments uh or description section in youtube so thank you so much yes. and, and we'll, uh, we'll get some more products sent to you which i don't we'll just get your address and we'll get some because we want you to stay healthy and clean too so <laughs> <laughs> thank you i'll take you up on that yeah, yeah for yeah, sure yeah. i mean I, I i'm ready to get my 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 tongue uh green <laughs> and blue for sure uh right yeah. now i'm excited to try it again Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. In case this wasn't already obvious, the information provided in this podcast is not intended to replace medical advice. We always recommend that you review this information with a functional medicine practitioner or environmental medicine doctor who is up to date with the latest information on the dangers of EMFs and the best practices around electro hypersensitivity, just to name these two things. And if you want to support my work, please consider sharing this episode with people you care about. You can also invest in my book, courses, or recommended products found at theemfguy.com. Thank you.